Ho ho ho, Merry Christmas everyone, here's some collective Christmas to celebrate. That's all, unfortunately. If I had any more, I'll accidentally shoot myself twice in the back of the head after talking to Sony's lawyers. Anyway, hello and welcome to my walkthrough. Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance. This walkthrough will include all data storage units, guides on how to obtain and complete all VR missions, all left hands, all men in boxes, methods to save all civilians, and all hidden endurance upgrades. This run will be done on a new game set to a vengeance difficulty using the Konami code. Due to certain ranked fights in this game being completely fair and bullshit, balanced, this will not be a Stormbringer run, but I will be performing hidden fights where possible and pointing them out where impossible. Another important thing to mention is that I'm using the Skip Credits and Starb logos mod to, well, Skip Credits and Starb logos. It also allows me to input the Konami code on a keyboard by pressing F11. Now, onto the video. Metal Gear Rising has five difficulty modes that you can see in front of you. Easy, Normal and Hard are available from the start, meanwhile Very Hard and Revengeance must be unlocked by being the game on the previous difficulty or by using the Konami code. The three main difficulty modes do the typical things you'd expect, like modified damage and enemy aggressiveness. There are some more obscure things that are altered, but I'll bring those up when I'm discussing the relevant mechanics. Very Hard and Revengeance is where things get interesting. Due to these modes being designed with NG Plus in mind, there is a massive difficulty spike. On Very Hard and Revengeance, we see a new enemy layout, enemies gain the ability to attack simultaneously, and attack animations spend less time in recovery and wind up. Revengeance is the same as Very Hard, except enemies deal extreme damage to the player, and the player also deals extreme damage from parry count and more of those later. Ben, let's begin with a quick warm up, shall we? Check the Soliton radar on the upper right, and head to the point marked on the display. You can jump over obstacles, but the ninja run will get you across them more quickly and easily. You can also attack while in motion with the ninja run, you know. Swinging your blade while dashing, for example, or striking your foes with a sliding attack. It's important to note that while a dash attack is the first attack you're taught, it is, in my opinion, one of the worst due to its pitiful damage and requirement to stay in ninja run where you can't parry or dodge. You can cut barriers with this and do some mild hit and run, but that's about it. Slide attacks are fairly useful, being a solid opening and a solid speed boost at the end of a run, and they also provide iframes. Now then, let's run a basic battle diagnostic. Try and neutralize all the enemies that appear. Now, a common mistake new players make is to just spam blade mode attacks. This is the worst way to deal damage in the game due to its atrocious DPS and lack of knockback, in addition to making it impossible to dodge or parry. In a rare case of Doctor giving decent combat advice, he's right here. You should mix up light and heavy attacks. Heavy attacks follow preset patterns and end with a blade mode prompt. I'll explain more about that in the next episode, while light attacks are random and potentially endless. For more information, see the help section in the pause menu, it has a full list of moves and their inputs. While I'm here, it's also worth knowing the fact that VR missions have difficulty settings independent of the rest of the game. In the case of tutorials, they're always set to easy mode. Combat is not all offense, however. You also need to protect yourself. First, follow the direction of the enemy's attack. Parry those attacks by executing light attacks of your own in the same direction. This is how you parry. 
It is the keystone of your defense. Draw foes in as close as possible and parry their blows to leave them exposed to counterattack. From your perspective, it will appear as if the enemy is frozen in time or at least moving very slowly. This is the perfect opportunity for you to carefully aim your strike, then slice your foe apart. Keep in mind, even you will not be able to parry every type of attack. Watch your foe's movements carefully. You ever wonder why so many people struggle with the pairing mechanics in this game? That tutorial is why. It, it's a crap tutorial. So here's how it really works. To parry, move in the direction of the enemy relative to the camera and hit the light attack button at the same time. This can only be done with an incoming attack. Making this input without one will just make Ryan rush forward with a light attack. On MKB, this means tap a direction key and click at the same time. On controller, this means flick the stick, not press in like the diagram suggests, flick, and press the light attack button at the same time. On easy assist mode, there is no need to input a direction, you should just press the light attack button. As a rule of thumb, each input will only block one attack, so you'll have to parry for every single attack. If you do this close to when the attack is just about to connect, how tight this timing is exactly varies by difficulty, you will launch a parry counter. I'll explain more of the details later, but right now just know that it deals high damage and has high stun power. This effect is massively amplified on Revengeance difficulty, so while I'll try not to rely on it too much, you should keep in mind that some things I manage on this walkthrough won't be possible on lower difficulties. Without further ado, let's begin the game proper. so far in just three short years. The sign of a strong leader, sir. No. The will of a strong people. <laughs> and one very able advisor. Thank you, sir. Your team deserves credit as well. Mr. Lightning Bolt. Just doing our job, Mr. Prime Minister. I must admit, I once thought of groups like yours as opportunists, enablers of war. But you've trained our new army well. Order has returned sooner than expected. Perhaps I was wrong about these private military companies. We prefer private security providers, sir. Most of Maverick's contracts do focus on security. Yes, well, the security can mean many things. There's a saying I like. One sword keeps another in the sheath. Sometimes the threat of violence alone is a deterrent. Sometimes by taking a life, others can be preserved. It's the code the samurai lived by. Hmm. A soldier and a philosopher. You are full of surprises, Mr. Lightning Bolt. I could say the same about you, Mr. Prime Minister. <clears throat> what is happening? Someone's blocking a lead vehicle. Hold on. Clear the road! This is official state business! Clear the road! We're authorized to use force if you do! 
was that? A cyborg. One of our competitors? Courtney, what is happening? We got hit, sir. A cyborg. Who's? Exit comes up unaffiliated. I'll notify all checkpoints. Get all money out of there. Yes, sir. This first fight is very simple. You'll fight three basic cyborgs alongside a gecko and very hard in revenge. You'll need to choose between light and heavy strikes to match the situation. Take self-repair units from your foes to replenish your own supply. I'll explain more on how to fight the gecko in the next episode since that's when they normally start appearing. to your solid down radar. Now you gain literally nothing flying here, so you should just cut the gate and run through ASAP.
<laughs> so you're Jack. What do you want with the Prime Minister? I want him dead. Nothing personal, of course. Africa's just getting a bit too peaceful. What? Business ain't been the same since they shut down SOP. A clean break from the war economy. Huh. Well, some of us lack that economy. How's an honest warmonger supposed to make a living? This is your answer? <laughs> Don't do it! Don't worry now. I won't. Not while he's still useful. <sighs> so long. What? They have a metal gear? Gear? Right. Take out that UMG and get after it. Use blade mode to damage its armor. Successfully parrying an attack will open up Ray to a blade mode prompt. You only have to cut once, the rest is just for fun at this stage. This is the main method to deal damage in this fight. Use your ninja lamp to deflect those shots. While it is possible to parry bullets directly, it's still much better to ninja run in almost every situation. Being the tutorial boss, this isn't going to be a terribly difficult fight. The main purpose is to emphasize using blade mode, ninja run, and parrying. Ray's attacks are generally very predictable, so if you've got parrying and movement down, this should be a simple fight. to dodge that plasma. The light rider, go for the light.
Weapon, please. What you're about to see is what the game calls a chance attack. If you see this prompt, or a YB slash triangle circle prompt on a controller, 99% of the time you should press it immediately. I'll go into more detail later. In the meantime, on the off chance you've never seen this game before, then, um... Welcome to Metal Gear Rising. It's quite the ride. Before I continue with the video, there are two things I'd like to quickly discuss. Firstly, if you're interested in looking for cut content in Metal Gear Rising, then have a look at the MGRR cut content community. Link is in the description. Secondly, I want money. If you subscribe to my channel, I can make money. Let me make money! Now, on with the video. He's on the other side of that collapsed building. Go! There, get him! Use your ninja van to move over obstacles automatically. Now we're gonna make a slight detour here and slide into this random storm drain for our first data storage module. These unlock concept art and once you've collected enough certain weapons. Do not let him out of your sight. You must catch him. A couple ways to avoid this laser, I generally walk towards it and jump as it approaches. You can try to iframe it with a slide, but that's a bit risky. It is possible to deal enough damage to go straight to a blade mode prompt, but I didn't manage that here. The turret can be a problem here, but spamming the parry input is a pretty reliable way to deal with it. Use blade mode to take down those heavy missiles. Overall, this fight demands roughly the same skills as Phase 1, but you're in a much tighter space here. Fortunately, Ray has a lot less health.
heading for the front of the train. After him. Brighton, an unidentified field roader is heading your way. Keep an eye out for it. Right before we catch up to Sundown, we've got a data storage module on the train cart just before the cutscene barrier. Prime Minister! Huh. Too little too late, hero. I won't be needing my little shield here any longer. about all the good things war has done for us. Why don't we ever hear speeches about that? Jobs, technology, oh. a common purpose? Uh. Raiden, forget me. Stop him. You ain't listening. I got in? All we're saying... Give war a chance! No! That's what Revengeance difficulty does to your health bar. Set thought, and not half bad. Still. <laughs> your technique lacks something. Anyway, this fire is unwinnable, so who cares? Now uh, I see. You deny your weapon its purpose. It yearns to bathe in the blood of your enemies, but you hold it back. No. My sword is a tool of justice.
Captain, are you all right? You're almost clear of the tunnel. Just hang on. Gotta try hard at that. Oh, did you want to practice first? Gotta try hard at that. Oh, did you want to practice first? This is what happens when you bring a tool to a sword fight. It's over. <laughs> Lucky devil. Now, a quick rundown of rankings and battle points. BP, short for battle points, is the currency used to buy weapons and upgrades in this game. You get BP in a variety of ways, but mainly by performing well in combat. For fights that end with a ranking screen, like the fights with Rei, you are awarded BP for speed, combo length, zandatsus, pickups, and kills, with large bonuses for things like no organic kills or no damage taken. Chapter rankings are then determined by the mean of rank fire outcomes rounded down. Getting high ranks in a chapter awards extra BP. Also I've noticed that I unlocked the suit which is obtained by being the prologue on very hard or a vengeance difficulty. It has no stats benefits, but it does look pretty cool. So that's it for our 0, zero of my MGR walkthrough. If you're watching this on the day of release, then Merry Christmas, but in any case, I look forward to seeing you next time. See ya!